Biggest Loser airs right here tonight at 7 o'clock. Well, the first and 90 degree day of spring is expected this weekend. That means more Valley families will be spending time near the backyard pool. And of course, that increases the risk for childhood accidents and drownings. Tram I is live poolside, in fact, at a Hilton Hotel in Mesa with some life saving water safety information. Hi, Tram. That's right, Scott. You know it is never too early to talk about water safety. You know what? Today is a really important day. That's because across the valley, each city is kicking off their water safety day. And even though it's March, folks, standing in the sun, it is really hot. And you can see adults and kids are already hitting the pool. Unfortunately, though, here in Maricopa County, there have already been 15 water-related incidents when it comes to children. Let's show you some of those numbers that we're talking about. Phoenix coming in the highest at six water-related incidents. Unfortunately, out of those, one resulted in a death. Surprise comes in next with four water-related incidents. And you know, the numbers still keep going on in a number of other cities. Back out here alive, unfortunately, every single year, Phoenix Children's Hospital sees the consequences of those water-related incidents. And this year, earlier today, they held an event, a very special event. Haley Francis is here to talk more about it. But what I like about this event is is they were empowering children. Children, and normally when you think about learning about uh, preventing child drownings, you're thinking about the caregivers and the parents and what they need to do to prevent them and in case something happens. But this is all about talking to the kids and getting them on board with learning. You know, Tram, Arizona is second in the nation for child drowning, so it is so important. Take a look. The classroom is outdoors and poolside today for more than 1,100 oh, East Valley first graders. That. What's the number? These pool safety exercises are a part of Water Safety Day at Mesa Community College. So we are going to do a little bit of safety stuff today. A chance to drill in the basics of water safety, empowering children to understand that they are old enough to make smart decisions and ask mom and dad to do the same. Pack up your toys and take them out of the pool. We are teaching 1,100 six-year-olds today all about water safety. They do a curriculum before they get here during school. And then what we do is go over it and over it and over it a million times today so that they're going to be safe around water. The curriculum is this, teaching floating, reach and throw to help a friend in water, don't go in yourself, and to teach the ABCs of water safety. Have adult eye-to-eye -eye supervision. Always have a barrier between you and the water and take classes. Learn to swim. This is how it translates to the kids. Um, if we don't have a grown-up watching us, then we'll drown. There's a fence around here, uh, around the pool, and, and if you're drowning, the grown-up was get help you. This event was started after a water tragedy for Mom Duane Letter. Her son Weston died in their family's pool in 1998. I mean, he was a preschooler um, who knew how to swim, and so when people say, "Well, as long as they know how to swim," you know what? You need to have multiple layers with what you and I are doing right now being the one thing that we didn't do, which has changed our life forever, and that's watch our son with constant eye-to-eye -eye contact. And on this day, with this safety campaign, which aims to teach these kids to ask for that eye-to-eye -eye contact, Duane hopes she's honoring her son's memory. I mean, the hope is that obviously our, our kids will teach together with their parents what to do in their own family unit, but then also carry that message on for when they're babysitters and parents someday also, um, and hopefully so that we can, you know, save children so that other families don't have to go through um, what we go through through. And what you saw there was part of a seven week program. The kids, uh, the curriculum starts in the classroom and then they have a lot of fun out at the event uh, talking about preventing child drownings and trim. I have to say, this is the first time I've ever heard somebody say to kids, hey, if you're sitting by the pool and mom or dad is reading a magazine, look at them and say, hey, you're not watching me right now, which is something to think about, right? Yeah, and you never hear that. You never hear from a child's perspective. Right. So it's really important to teach the kids. It's a two way street, mom and child too. Yeah. Haley, great story. Thanks for that. Now I want to bring in Captain Forrest Smith. He is with the Mesa Fire Department and I want to go over, you know, you just heard about Haley's story about kids knowing what to do. Let's talk about parents knowing what to do and adults. So let's just say you're at a party or you're, you know, in someone's backyard. Nobody knows CPR. 
Tell me the simplest way of what to do when a child goes under and you have to pull the child to the to the side and what what are the basics so that you you can remember what to do in a state of panic well Dram, you know this is excellent because the first key is to make sure that you learn some form of cpr that you learn cpr in general mm -hmm. so the fact that you're doing something is key so in a case like this first thing you want to do is once you get the child out of water do your head tilt chin lift okay. see if that does anything different Okay, once you do the head tilt chin lift, child's, what you, not, breathing. child's not breathing, you shake to make sure that uh, he or she's not responding. Okay. You've got them already on a flat, hard surface. Okay. Now what we want you to do is go ahead and look, listen, and feel. So you're gonna put your head right against his nostrils, look at his chest and see if there's any rise or fall. Nothing. Okay, you've got nothing. Now I want you to go in and pinch his nostrils. Okay. All right, and then give two good, slow, deep breaths. And while you're doing that, you wanna try to look also yeah, there you are. You're look okay. Now still you're, nothing. Still nothing. Now what I want you to do is go in and feel right along the center of his chest right there, okay. right around where the nipple line is. Okay. And then yeah, you've got it right there. And you start giving really good deep compressions there. You'll do thirty Straight of those. Arms. Straight arms, right. You're right on top of him or her. Okay. Straight arms. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue doing this. You're gonna do thirty of these. You're gonna go back and also do more of those breaths right there. Right. We want you to do this for about two minutes. At which point, if you're by yourself, and, and actually, now let's back up here. You said you're at a party. You've got a lot of people. We want somebody to make sure that they call 911 as soon as possible. You call, get first responders out there. And in that time, if you don't remember how to do these compressions, the operator, the call taker will usually walk you through it. But the fact that you're just doing something is changing, uh, could change that outcome. Okay, so let's talk about the child is still not breathing. Mm -hmm. You guys move in. How do you guys take over from there? Right. Well, Valley Wide, we have the same way that we work these uh, drownings. Crew comes in. We've got four people in the truck. You have two people who are paramedics. We've got airway kits, oxygen. What we do is we start doing the number one thing that you've already started before we got here is working the airway. We start breathing for the child, getting them some fresh oxygen. In the meantime, while we're doing that, we're starting IVs, giving medications, continuing with those compressions, being real aggressive and working this because you never know what little or what that person's done could have done something where that child is going to get a heartbeat. So anything works right there. If you don't remember the ins and outs of CPR, do something. Okay, the worst thing you can do is nothing. That's exactly the worst thing you can do is nothing. Call 911 early, get something started, and you never know. That outcome could be uh, at least better than, than it could be. Great advice. Okay, coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk to actually this mother and son behind me over here swimming and what she does to help her child learn the basics. Also, we're going to show you parents out there what to do when you come to a resort like this or a hotel when you're vacationing, what you need to look out for. Right now, we want to toss it to Karibi, and Karibi, yeah. I'll tell you what, like I said earlier, it's not even that hot, but when you're in the sun, it's hot enough to hit the pool. It is, it is, and that's why all of that is just some uh, out Breaking news out of Northeast Phoenix, you guys love, love the scene. The Phoenix fire crews, a three-year-old boy, somehow fell into this backyard pool earlier this afternoon. Still unclear how long the child was in the water. A family member found him there, pulled him out. The child was not breathing. 911 was called, and the family began performing CPR. When crews arrived, the three-year-old boy was awake and alert. We're told the boy was taken to the hospital as a precaution. Tram? And that is why we want to hammer home the important message of water safety. We are out here live in Mesa. Coming up in a couple of minutes, I'm going to be talking to a Valley mom, and we're going to talk about the important lessons that she is teaching her son. Also, when you're staying at a resort or a hotel, the signs that you need to look for to protect your kids. Coming up. La Mesa RV has done we remind all of our viewers of the importance of water safety. Still last year, 17 children and three teens drowned in the valley alone. So today, Water Watchers at Phoenix Children's Hospital is trying to make sure that number goes down this year. Tram joins us again from the Hilton Phoenix East in Mesa with what parents need to know to keep their kids safe. Tram? Absolutely. There are so many things that parents need to be aware of. Their surroundings, what they tell their kids, and so much more, including, of course, CPR. We are joined now by Shannon Hakes from Chandler and her son, Sean. Sean is just four years old, and we thank you so much for being with us today. What I find really interesting in your situation is that you are so vigilant about teaching your child water safety, and you don't even own a pool. No, we don't. We, um, you know, we have enough friends and family that have pools and in our neighborhood there's um, neighbors that have um, pools in their backyards 
and not everybody has a pool fence, so <laughs> yes. um, it was important for us to start teaching him, and we started at nine months. So um, we go back every year, and we do a refresher course so that we can make sure that after the winter season that he still remembers the tools that he learned the year previously. And, um, and you make sure that whenever Sean is in the pool that you are always in there with him and you still even go through some drills and activities. Show me what you do. Sure. Yeah, we, we are, I'm in the pool with him at all times. I never let him swim by himself. But Sean, let's practice and swim to me, okay? okay. We try and make it fun so that he still enjoys what he's doing. Swim to me. And we practice the things that we learn. And he gets his face in the water and we do this time and time again and we just make it fun for him and he, he likes to do it. Um, we practice floating in case he's swimming and he gets tired and put your arms out. And that way he's used to what to do when he is in the water and if, if he were to be swimming and gets a little tired, um, this is something that he's learned in the practice sessions that we do. So. That is phenomenal. Okay, Shannon and Sean, thank you so much. Good job, kiddo. All right, so let's talk about when, as the summer, you know, comes right around the corner, the temperatures heat up, you're staying in, you're doing a vacation or a staycation, and you're at a resort. We're here with Marisa Ramirez Ramos from the Mesa Fire Department. And tell us the things that parents need to be looking out for when they're staying at a public place and there is no lifeguard. One of the things that the Hilton does well is they they have highly visible signs that are easy to read. They're indicating that there is not a lifeguard on duty, as well as having the instructions for CPR if you do come into a situation where you need to administer CPR. The other thing you want to do is you want to look at the fencing. You want to make sure that's in proper working order. So in this case, we have a fence that surrounds the entire pool. It does have a self-closing, self-latching gate. So that's another really important thing. You want to look around and become familiar with the surroundings because it's a new environment for you. Okay, but here's the deal. What happens, though, if you go to a hotel or a place where there is not a lot of signage? There, there isn't that self-locking gate. What do you do? And that could very well happen. And the biggest part of that is in the ABCs. C is for classes. So you want to prepare ahead of time. You want to make sure that you have classes of CPR for any adult that's in, you know, supervision of children. As as well as you want to give the children swim lessons so that's their classes here's something else that you guys want to look for when you're staying at a resort or a hotel a life preserver find out be aware of your surroundings what else and we also have a shepherd's hook here. So this is a rescue hook that if you don't want to be involved in the situation for fear that you might get drug into being part of the drowning, maybe you're not an adequate swimmer yourself, you could literally just reach this out to the victim and help them by pulling them in. Great advice, Marisa. Coming up in our next half hour, we're going to talk to you about the things that parents should know when they drop their kids off at, let's just say, a friend's house or grandma's house. You know that situation happens all the time. Also, I put a list of information in terms of tips and safety information on our EVB Live Facebook page, along with a water safety walk campaign that's happening on March 31st. That's on our EVB Live Facebook page. Back to you guys. Tram, great information. Thanks so much. Now let's send it up to Mark Curtis. Next this afternoon, a young boy was pulled from a backyard pool. The family found the three-year-old boy under the water near Thunderbird and 40th Street. They pulled him out, called 911, started CPR. When firefighters arrived, the boy was breathing. He's now at the hospital. We certainly hope he is okay. Tram joins us now again live from Mesa to talk about water safety. Tram, this close call really underlines why water safety is such an important topic, especially as we're heading towards summer. Absolutely. Talk about timing, Scott. And now, after that incident, it brings the number of water-related incidents involving children in Maricopa County to 16, and it's only March. Well, we're in Mesa for two reasons. One, because we are teaming up with the Mesa Fire Department to get the word out about water safety. The second reason is because Phoenix Children's Hospital held a special event, and that's where I want to bring in Haley to talk more about that. Yeah, a whole bunch of kids, young ones, too. It was a really important safety message today that they had, and it was uh, all wrapped up and fun, which is probably the best way to reach six-year-olds, right? About 1,100 of them headed out to Mesa Community College today. East Valley first graders, they were put to the test today. They have been learning about water safety in school. Then they come out for Water Safety Day. It's at MCC. It's put on by Phoenix Children's Hospital. Around an above-ground pool, the kids get to hear about the ABCs of water safety. Always have an adult around you. Always have a barrier to keep you away from the water. And take classes and learn to swim. And today's 
curriculum is built around the idea that kids can ask mom and dad to do these things and remind their parents to be vigilant around the water. The event was created in honor of a little boy who died more than a decade ago. I mean, the hope is that obviously our, our kids will teach together with their parents what to do in their own family unit, but then also carry that message on for when they're babysitters and parents someday also. I um, mean, hopefully so that we can, you know, save children so that other families don't have to go through um, what we go through. So this was part of a seven week curriculum that these kids go through tram. They start out in the classroom learning about the ABCs of water safety, what to do if a friend falls in the pool to reach something out to them instead of jumping in. So it was really interesting to be able to see six year olds take an active role in water safety today. That is so important. Yeah. It's not just the adults, it's the kids as well. Yeah. Haley, thank you so much for that. Now, right now I want to bring in Marisa Ramirez Ramos. She's with the Mesa Fire Department as well. And Marisa, here's the thing. A lot of times Times when it gets this hot, people are dropping off their kids at grandma's house, at a friend's house. You don't have as much control when you do that, when you trust your kid into someone else's home in their hands. So what is it that parents need to know? Sure. As a parent, you still have a right and an obligation for your child's safety to ask questions. What secondary devices do they have in place? Do they have window locks? Do they have something like an alarm that's on a door that will sound and give that notification that a child has slipped out into the pool area? If those things aren't in place there are still things you can do as a parent though you can bring a life safety device this one is u.s coast guard certified so you can make sure that your child is still safe there are lapses in that direct eye to eye supervision and those barriers and all those safety devices are just secondary to help us in those moments when those lapses happen very quickly what about your own home okay in your own home you want to make sure abc's you want to have adult supervision but those lapses happen so you want to have fencing around your pool you want to make sure that here in Mesa it's at least five feet tall you want to have a self-closing self-latching gate you want to make sure that things are away from the pool like furniture oftentimes we put furniture up against the pool and it would aid a child in getting access to that pool and don't make it more appealing don't leave toys inside so a child has that you know want to get into the pool area I love this tip too. party time when you're hosting a party someone who's designated should be wearing this little bracelet here to yep. remind folks that you got to keep an eye eye out and not drink any alcohol and watch those kids. Yep. And if you are on shift, you hand it off to the next person. It's a visual aid to see who's in charge at that moment in time. Marisa, thank you so much for that. Again, it's only in the 80s right now. It is still so warm. Imagine what it's going to be like later on this summer and even this weekend, Karibi. It's going to start to heat up soon. It is going to start to heat up soon.